Thank you, Steve. A stunning ruling this week with major implications for every American. The U.S. Supreme Court ruling this week that jail officers and guards have the right to strip search all new jail inmates, even those arrested for minor traffic offenses. But was the ruling constitutional? Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else, and we want to warn you, some of the details are graphic. But while the media is focused on the decision by the nation's high court on Obamacare, a decision which we won't know until June, they've all but ignored a major ruling by the high court that strips away another level of personal rights. The ruling that security concerns within a jail population outweigh personal privacy rights. So here's the background. In 2005, Albert Florence was arrested in New Jersey after being stopped on a highway and taken to jail over an unpaid fine. Florence, a finance director for a car dealership, was held for six days. And during those six days, he was strip searched twice at two New Jersey jails. Here are the graphic details of those searches. At the first jail, Florence said he was ordered to hold out his arms, turn around and lift his genitals. At the second jail, Florence was ordered to squat and cough while jailers looked for contraband. Six days later, he was released when he showed that the fine had already been paid before he was arrested. Albert Florence sued on the grounds that those searches violated his constitutional rights, protecting against unreasonable searches. Unreasonable because Florence made the case that he was arrested for something that had nothing to do with weapons or with drugs. So why was he being searched for these things? Here's how the Supreme Court ruled. By a vote of five to four, splitting along conservative liberal ideological lines, the high court rejected the argument that the searches violated privacy rights. The conservatives on the court sided with the jails and with the Obama administration, which argued for strip searches of all those entering the general jail population, even those arrested on minor offenses. In the opinion for the court's conservative majority, Justice Anthony Kennedy stated that the jail search procedures, quote, struck a reasonable balance between inmate privacy and the needs of the institution. On the other side, the court's four liberals dissented, calling the searches harmful, humiliating, and degrading. Justice Stephen Breyer wrote in a dissent that this ruling is a serious affront to human dignity and pointed out an instance where a nun of 50 years, a nun, was arrested for trespassing during an anti-war demonstration and strip-searched. At the end of the day, the court's ruling backs the greater good concept. And that's what you need to know. The sole function of the Supreme Court is to ensure that laws and government rules do not overreach the Constitution. In the case of Mr. Florence, he was wrongfully arrested, wrongfully held for six days. He was strip searched twice and humiliated in the process. But the responsibility to make sure that the jail population is safe appears to have been put on him. Despite what you may have been told as of late, the Constitution is not a document that tells the government all the things that it can do. It's a document that is explicit in the things that the government or law enforcement or even the courts cannot do. And the Fourth Amendment is also explicit. The rights of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. Clearly the definition the Supreme Court is using of unreasonable is anything but clear. And that is Reality Check. If you would like to make your voice heard on the story, you can head over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by searching Ben Swan WXIX. Well, coming up